بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Being a principled person, especially in modern times, in our times, is a very difficult proposition. There's a hadith that's related by Imam Al-Tirmidhi from Anas ibn Malik, where the Prophet وسلم, said, يأتي على الناس زمان الصابر فيهم على دينه قلقابث على الجمر أو قما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام where he said that there will come a time upon the people when the one who is steadfast in his religion will be like a person clutching onto a burning piece of coal, simply maintaining that there is an absolute truth or that there is a moral right and wrong will make you the target of ridicule and verbal attack in our culture. Abrahamic tradition is under ideological attack uh, in the media and in the academy. They'll call you all sorts of things, all sorts of ad hominem epithets, backward, misogynist, homophobic, violent, stupid, archaic, and people don't like to be ridiculed or verbally attacked. So what do they do? Well, they're going to drop the coal and say, wow, that is just too hot. I can't handle it. People are led to believe nowadays that atheism is better for societal well-being than theism. There was an 18th century French philosopher, a believer in God, who said it like this. Imagine you had a magic button. And if you press this button, all of the wealth of the entire world would come into your possession. But there's one catch. If you press this button, a human being, a random human being, anywhere in the world will fall down dead. It could be anyone. It could be your own mother. It could be a total stranger halfway around the world. So he says, to whom would you entrust this button? To a very devout, God-fearing Abrahamic theist who believes in absolute moral accountability, who believes in a day of reckoning, a day of judgment, or to a very committed atheist who believes in natural selection, who believes in survival of the fittest, does not believe in an afterlife, who does not believe in any type of supernatural moral accountability. Think about it. Ibn, Juz Ibn Juzay al-Kalbi, he said that there are seven compositional forms in the Quran. In other words, seven types of ayat in the Quran. Two of them are covenantal and retributive, or wa'ad and wa'id, promise and threat. The following, uh, the following is a retributive verse that I, find, that I find myself quoting a lot these days. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, may yartadda minkum an deenihi fa sawfa yati allahu bi qawmin yuhibbahum wa yuhibbunahu a dhillatin ala al-mu'mineen, a izzatin ala al-kafirin, yujahiduna fi sabilillahi wa la yakhafuna lawma talaim, thalika fadlullahi yu'tihi man yasha. Wallahu wasiun alim. O you who believe, uh, O you who believe, whoever amongst you turns away from the deen, from his deen, soon will Allah, soon will Allah subhanahu wa taala bring a people whom He will love, and they will love Him, <clears throat> lowly with the believers, but izzatin al kafirin. But having izza, having honor, <clears throat> uh, having uh, a type of um, uh, strictness with the unbelievers. Yujahidun fi sabilillah, striving and struggling in the in the way of Allah subhanahu wa taala, and never afraid of those who find fault, never afraid of being blamed for being believers. That is the grace of Allah, that He gives to whom, whomever He wills, and Allah subhanahu wa taala is uh, wasiun alim. He is the one who is all encompassing and omniscient. So what do we glean from this ayah? We glean that the main reason for the irtidad, the, the main reason uh, for the apostasy uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing in this ayah is a lack of love. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَأْتِ اللَّهُ بِقَوْمٍ يُحِبُّهُمْ وَيُحِبُّونَهُ That if you turn away, then Allah will bring a people. A people that he will love and they will love him. 
So it's a lack of love according to the exegetes, the ulama, the, uh, the mufassirin of, of this verse. Whom does Allah love and why? Well, in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explicitly uh, tells us the categories of people whom he loves. These are believers who exemplify some sort of character virtue. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Allah yuhibbu at-tawabin. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the people of Tawbah, the people who repent. Inna Allah yuhibbu al-mutatahirin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the people of Tahara, the people who, uh, the people of purity, who, who purify themselves. Inna Allah yuhibbu al-muqsitin, the people of Qis, the people of justice. Inna Allah yuhibbu al-mutawakilin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the people of Tawakkul, the people who put their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna Allah yuhibbu al-muttaqeen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the people of Taqwa, the people of piety. The people who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna Allah yuhibbu sabirin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the people of patience, the, per, the people of perseverance, the people of sabr. Inna Allah yuhibbu muhsinin Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the people of ihsan, the people who make things beautiful, the people of spiritual and, uh, and every other type of excellence. These are the virtues of the hibbaullah. Uh, of the beloved ones of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now there is a hadith in Tirmidhi, and there's some weakness in the hadith, where the Prophet وسلم, is reported to have said something quite amazing. He said, Inna Allah amarani bi hubbi arba'ah. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered me to love four people. Wa akhbarani annahu yuhibbuhum. And he's informed me that he himself loves these people. Qila uh, ya Ras- uh, qila ya it was said, O Messenger of God, Sammihim lana, name them for us. Now he's going to name them, but if you look at all four of these names, you'll notice that these were men who never wavered in the deen. They were principled, they were dedicated, they were loyal. All of the virtues that are extolled in the Quran, people of repentance, of purity, of justice, of trust, of piety, of patience, etc., the first one that he named was Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Imam al-Tabari says that in the early Meccan period when the ayah was revealed وَأَنذِرْ الْأَقْرَبِينَ Warn your family who are nearest of kin. The Prophet asked Sayyidina Ali to organize a dinner party and 40 men of the aristocrats of Bani Abdul Muttalib attended and Sayyidina Ali was maybe 13 13 years old at the time. And so the Prophet ﷺ, he stood up and he said, I've been ordered to call you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wahdahu la sharika la. Call, I've been ordered to call you to Allah as the singular God with no partners. Which of you will help me in my mission? And there was a long, uncomfortable silence. And then Sayyidina Ali stood up and said, I will help you. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Hada akhi, this is my brother. Ati'hu, obey him. And all of the men started laughing and said, he's ordering us to be under your son. They were saying that to Abu Talib. But that was Sayyidina Ali. لا يخاف لوم تلائم. He wasn't afraid of people who, who found fault in him or blamed him for his religion. And of course, we have the famous hadith, or the famous statement of the Prophet ﷺ. It's mentioned by Ibn Majah that when the Prophet ﷺ was at Khaybar, he said one night, لَأَبْعَثَنَّ رَجُلًا Tomorrow I'm going to give the standard to a man who loves Allah and his messenger and who is beloved to Allah and his messenger. And he gave it to Sayyidina Ali. In Bukhari, we are told that the Mushrikeen wanted to revise the treaty of Hudaybiyah from saying Muhammad Rasulullah to Muhammad ibn Abdullah. And so the Prophet Sallallahu he ordered Sayyidina Ali, he said, erase where it says Rasulullah. And Sayyidina Ali said, La wallahi la amhuka abada. I would never erase you. So Sayyidina Ali even disobeyed the Prophet, ﷺ, but it was out of love and reverence for the Prophet. ﷺ. The next name that he mentioned was Abu Dhar al Ghifari. When Abu Dhar al Ghifari became Muslim, he went to the Kaaba and started shouting, La ilaha illallah. And the Mushrikeen beat him within an inch of his life. 
And Al-Abbas had to throw his body over him to save his life. And the Prophet said to Abu Dhar, you, sh you, should, not have, you should not have done that. And he, Abu Dhar said, I couldn't help it. And when the Prophet passed away, وسلم, Abu Dhar moved to the Syrian desert. He never recovered from the passing of the Prophet ﷺ. He was never the same. He was terminally heartbroken. And the third man he mentioned, Al-Miqdad ibn al-Aswad, that just before the Battle of Badr, the Prophet ﷺ, he held a war council. And the Prophet told the Ansar that the coming conflict was within the Quraysh. In other words, between the polytheistic Meccans and the Muslim immigrants. So the Ansar were not required to join the fight. Imam al-Bukhari, he relates on the authority of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud that al-Miqdad ibn al-Aswad, he stood up in the council and he said, Ya Rasulallah, inna la naqulu laka kama qalat banu Israel li Musa, fadhhab anta wa rabbuka faqatila inna ha huna qa'idun. We will not say to you, as the Bani Israel said to Musa alayhi salam, go you and your Lord and fight and we will sit here. وَلَكِنْ imdi wa nahnu ma'ak, but advance and we are with you. فَكَأَنَّهُ surya عَنْ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ وسلم. And it was as if the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم's face was beaming with joy at the words of Al-Miqtad ibn al-Aswad. And the fourth name he mentioned, Salman al-Farisi. Salman, of course, was a scholar of religion who traveled the world to find the truth. He was told by a Christian bishop in Iraq that the appearance of a prophet was imminent in the Hijaz. Salman arrived in Medina and he was captured as a slave of the Bani Qurayza. And he was a slave for years. And once in a while he'd see the Prophet ﷺ and feel absolutely elated until finally the Prophet ﷺ found a way for him to be free from his so-called master. And the Prophet said in a hadith in Tirmidhi that if Iman, if faith was suspended from the Pleiades, هَذَا وَأَصْحَابُهُ This man and his companions would find a way to reach it. The Prophet said about him, Salmanu minna ahlil bayt. Salman is from us, the people of the house, an honorary member of the ahlil bayt. Amarani bihubbihim wa akhbarani annahu yuhibbuhum. The Prophet said that I have been ordered to love them and I've, and I've been informed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he loves them. So look at the qualities of these beloved ones of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my, my advice, my parting advice is to be patient, to keep going, to keep the faith, to understand that life is a marathon and that we need to pace ourselves. But don't stop running. Don't sell out the religion and don't check out of the religion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us in the Quran, Wa'bud Rabbaka Hatta Ya'tika Yaqeen to worship your Lord. Worship your Lord until Al Yaqeen certitude or the certain thing should come to you. And many of the exegetes, including Imam Al Qurtubi, Imam Al Razi, Al Tabari, Zamakhshari, they say that the meaning of Al Yaqeen here is probably a reference to death. Worship your Lord until death comes to you, because that's certain. One of the very last things that the Prophet ﷺ said while he was in his final illness, he sat on the minbar in the mosque, and he said, "Inna Allah khayyara abdan bayna dunya wa bayna ma inda." Allah, he said that indeed Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has given a choice to one of His servants between what is in the world and what is with Him. فَاخْتَارَ ذَلِكَ الْعَبْدُ مَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ And that certain servant chose what, it, what is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَبَكَى أَبُو بَكْرٍ And at that, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, he started to weep. And Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, he said, فَعَجِبْنَا لِبُكَائِهِ That we were very surprised at his weeping. Why was he weeping? And then he realized that the Prophet ﷺ was talking about himself, that he was the servant, that his time was very short. And the Prophet said, فَاصْبِرُوا حَتَّى تَلْقَوْنِ عَلَى الْحَوْضِ Be patient, persevere until, uh, until you meet me at the Hawd, at my basin. So be patient, keep going, persevere until we meet the Prophet ﷺ, insha'Allah, just outside of paradise. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger know we can't be perfect. Do the best we can. فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ مَسْتَتَعْتُمْ As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as much as you can. Do your best. 
The Prophet ﷺ said, Try your best to be upright, although you will not be able to do so. We will never reach perfection, but do your best. And he said, Work, work, and the best of your actions is the prayer. وَخَيْرُ أَعْمَالَكُمْ الصَّلَاةِ وَلَا يُحَافِذُ عَلَى الْوُدُوءِ إِلَّا مُؤْمِنٍ And only a believer is constant in his ablutions. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the, the tawfiq to understand. وَصَلَّى اللَّهُ سَيْنَ مُحَمَّدٍ وَلَا أَلِهِ وَسَحْبِهِ وَسَلَّمُ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِ الْعَالَمِين